So when will we have a vaccine? It's a question that comes to mind whenever we hear a story about the coronavirus pandemic. Our Sunday morning cover story is reported by Martha Teichner. So what am I seeing? These individuals are putting one of the single-use bioreactor bags into this 50-liter bioreactor. Step one, in manufacturing a coronavirus vaccine. It's not an understatement to say that the entire nation's hopes are focused on what's happening right there through that window. They'll mix the ingredients together per the needs of the particular platform they're developing, in this case, Novavax. For clinical trials already underway in Australia. This is where it begins to produce the hundreds of millions of doses. That Sean Kirk is executive vice president of Emergent Biosolutions, a Maryland company gearing up now, preparing 4,000 liter tanks to have hundreds of millions of doses ready to go if and when any of its clients, Novavax, Johnson & Johnson, Vaxart, and AstraZeneca, make it to the finish line in the race to a vaccine. What happens to all those vaccines that you're ramping up to have ready on day one after approval if it doesn't come? Yeah, the federal government's made it clear that they're willing to invest a substantial amount of money. $628 million just to emergent to manufacture them all anyway, before approval, whether they succeed or fail. If they're deemed to be ultimately unusable, then it's quite possible that they could be discarded. Just literally it's thrown away. Wow. It's risky, it's expensive, but we'll be saving massive amounts of time. We'll be saving years. President Donald Trump announced Operation Warp Speed on May 15th. Its objective is to finish developing and then to manufacture and distribute a proven coronavirus vaccine as fast as possible. Again, we'd love to see if we could do it prior to the end of the year. To try and meet that target, the federal government has already pumped more than $2 billion into what it's betting are the likeliest to win FDA approval fastest, out of more than 120 in development. Drug industry heavyweights are behind some of the front runners, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, AstraZeneca, encouraging news about a potential coronavirus vaccine from the drug maker Moderna that its vaccine showed promise in small early stage testing. Not so well known, the biotech firm Moderna touted promising early results for its vaccine, which uses an unconventional new approach to creating immunity. We are desperate for a vaccine. As a consequence, we're looking for any sort of news that could be good. But I think what we should exercise here is humility. Dr. Paul Offit is a member of the National Institutes of Health panel, overseeing the accelerated development of a COVID vaccine. He fears what he calls an October surprise and co-authored this op-ed in the New York Times. I do worry that as we move to September and October and then Election Day, that there would be a pressure to get a vaccine out there, even if it hasn't been tested in the way it needs to be tested, which is a big phase three trial. What that means is giving a vaccine to at least 20,000 people, with another 10,000 getting a placebo, and then waiting to see who gets a disease and who doesn't. Typically, those trials last years, not months. It took off it more than a quarter of a century to get his own vaccine licensed for rotavirus, which killed half a million infants and young children each year around the world, more than the total death toll from coronavirus. People are frantic. They're almost panicky about living in a world until there is a vaccine. Now, how do you manage the public pressure to hurry up and get to the finish line? Hopefully there will be an understanding that in order for us to prove that a vaccine is safe and effective, that it needs to go through this process. I mean, I just harken back to the, the polio days. April 26, 1954, nationwide field trial vaccination nicknamed the shot heard round the world. We waited, despite the fact that every year in this country, as many as 30,000 children would get polio and be permanently paralyzed or end up in iron lungs, and 1,500 died. All through 1954 and into 1955, 
The Ports on the Field trials funnel into an evaluation center established at the University of Michigan. How safe is the vaccine? How effective is it? The nation awaits the verdict. If you think that the terror of that was any different than the terror of this, you're wrong. So we could even wait then, and we can wait now. A.B. Rorig thinks he and other people of his generation can help speed up the process. By my doing this, there is a very real, very immediate chance that a vaccine could be developed earlier, lives will be saved. Even if the cost is getting very, very ill or even dying. Yes, that cost is real. Rorig is 20, a college student, and a member of One Day Sooner, an organization calling for controversial human challenge trials in which healthy young volunteers, 18 to 25, would test vaccines by being exposed to the virus deliberately. No waiting. So far, more than 25,000 people worldwide say they'd do it. I have some history taking on this sort of calculated medical risk because I donated my kidney last summer. And so I see this as a very similar situation. I am very willing to take this risk onto myself because I know that COVID-19 is devastating the world. This is, I think, my generation's World War II, basically. We have multiple instances for many diseases, such as influenza, dengue, cholera, malaria, typhoid, where it has been shown that those human challenges actually were able to better understand the infection, but also test therapeutics and vaccines. But with COVID, there are ethical and safety issues, according to Dr. Nadine Rufael. An associate professor of medicine at Emory University, she's worked on four human challenge trials, which start out with deciding which strain of a virus to use and how big a dose to give. For coronavirus human challenge, we don't have a strain, we don't have a dose. We also don't have good drug against COVID. Ordinarily, do diseases or viruses that, are, that have human challenge trials do they have rescue drugs? Typically they do. So with no rescue therapy for coronavirus, that intensifies the risk. Correct. It would take three to six months, she says, just to set up human challenge trials. But she's in favor of moving forward. Is it brave or is it crazy? If it's done the right way, it's really a service to society. So you're leaning toward brave? I guess so. <laughs> For COVID vaccines, human challenge trials are still only in the discussion phase, while several of the front runners are expected to begin phase three trials this summer. I still think there is a reasonably good chance that by the very beginning of 2021, that if we're going to have a vaccine, that we will have it by then. For all Dr. Fauci's optimism, will that first vaccine allow us to take off our masks? feel safe? Will it keep us from getting COVID-19 or just from getting really sick or dying? We have to make sure that people know that it's likely it's going to protect against moderate to severe disease, but maybe not mild disease associated with re-exposure. So I think we need to manage expectations. Dr. Paul Offit predicts the first across the finish line may not be the ultimate winner. You don't want it to be necessarily the first vaccine. You want it to be the best vaccine.